Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Flying Car Pal V notes latest milestone. Also, Air Race E expands to include new electric race classes. And EAA Air Academy postpones again until 2022. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with the latest news, so let's go ahead and start with getting a flying car to the market is hard, but Pal V notes latest milestone. Following their obtaining on-the-road operating permissions for Europe, Palvi is now reportedly also the first to complete the full certification basis with EASA. Based on Palvi's 10 years of test results, EASA specialist teams finalized the requirements for the Palvi Liberty. The final phase is compliance demonstration before car flying becomes reality for Palvi's customers. Getting a flying car to the market is hard. It takes at least 10 years, said Robert Dingemans, Palvi's CEO. Although we are experienced entrepreneurs, we learn that in aviation, everything is exponentially stricter. Next to the aircraft, all aspects of the organization, including suppliers and maintenance parties, must be certified. In 2009, Palvi agreed with EASA to use the certification specifications for small rotorcraft, CS27, as a starting point for the development of the certification basis. Palvi worked with EASA to amend the complete list of over 1,500 criteria to make it applicable for the Palv. The list was published last year for review by industry experts, and the final version was published last week. The EASA type certificate will be valid in Europe and is also accepted in 80% of the world market, including the US and China. After the break, a rare aircraft joins the Lone Star Flight Museum. Details after these messages. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aerol Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some shorter, interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Let's go ahead and start with Rare Howard 250 joins LS FM Collection. The Lone Star Flight Museum has announced the arrival of a rare Lockheed Howard 250 Trigear. The aircraft was gifted to the museum by the Mid-America Flight Museum in Mount Pleasant, Texas and will now become a permanent part of the LSFM's aircraft collection. The Howard 250 is an added highlight to the new and ongoing relationship between the two flight museums that will see additional visiting aircraft at LSFM over the next several years. Smart Sky raises additional capital. Smart Sky Networks has closed on more than $32 million in additional equity and debt funding as it prepares for the launch of its next generation aviation Wi Fi connectivity service later this year. Smart Sky's office grade in flight Wi Fi service for business and commercial aviation uses the pioneering company's unique, scalable, single beam per aircraft approach, which is backed by a patent portfolio and years of flight testing. Guess who has to pay $6.6 million in penalties to the FAA? Boeing does. The FAA has assessed $5.4 million in deferred civil penalties against the Boeing company for failing to meet its performance obligations under a 2015 settlement agreement. 
the Chicago-based aircraft manufacturer also agreed to pay over $1 million to settle two pending FAA enforcement cases. Under the 2015 agreement, Boeing pledged to change its internal processes to improve and prioritize regulatory compliance. Hydrogen-powered UAV propulsion system begins testing. Through a cooperative agreement, Northwest UAV and NRL have successfully completed a hydrogen fuel cell prototype designed specifically for the higher power to weight ratio and harsh operational requirements of unmanned systems. After a successful first operational test, NWUAV and NRL plan further developments to their hydrogen fuel cell prototype with a test flight slated for later this year. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Air Race E expands to include a new electric race classes. Air Race E, a hopeful electric air race promoter, has announced it is launching two new district race classes, one an airplane and the other a VTOL. The move to amplify its operations and create more races is reportedly the direct results of high levels of interest and demand from across the industry. The new airplane formula will be named the Performance Class and will be based on standard electric powertrain, which will focus on optimization, efficiency, and extracting the maximum potential out of a powertrain. Air Race E is developing this new race plane under its own roof with the help of leading manufacturers in the industry. Some modifications and enhancements will be allowed in the performance class to continue Air Race E's mission of accelerating technological innovation and showcasing new technologies in the aerospace electrification industry. Air Race E's existing race airplane formula will be renamed the Open Class, referring to the fact that any and all manufacturers can produce their own unique powertrain configurations up to 150 50 kilowatt power. Both airplane classes will be raced according to the same rules but with differences governing the powertrains. After these messages, the EAA Air Academy postpones again. Details after the break. Introducing the new ELT 345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter or ELT boasts an industry low price while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Welcome back. EAA Air Academy postpones again until 2022. The EAA Air Academy will remain on hiatus until 2022, with the summer sessions in Oshkosh canceled due to the difficulty of scheduling multiple weeks of education sessions involving young people from throughout the country. Given the difficulties in providing the operational extras needed for youth resident camps, in the current environment, it was simply wasn't possible to plan a quality Air Academy experience for young aviation enthusiasts this year, said Ron Canoli, EAA's museum and education director. We look forward to inviting many of these young people back to Oshkosh for the 2022 Air Academy sessions. Any 2021 registration fees that have been received will be refunded, and all current registrants are invited to re-register when 2022 applications are opened later this year. EAA chapters that used their credits to fund Air Academy students from their area will retain those credits for future applicants to the camps. The EAA Air Academy was founded in 1984 as a resident camp in Oshkosh, 
that each summer invites young people to engage in aviation discovery with youth from throughout the country. Age-appropriate sessions range from 5 to 10 days for ages 12 through 18. The EAA Air Academy is fully accredited by American Camp Association. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with store ideas or just to say hi. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next week.